there's a lot of overlap between dystopian and other genres of fiction. So to talk about what the dystopian genre is, we also need to talk about what it isn't, or what it isn't necessarily. I think the most obvious contrast between dystopian fiction and another genre is obviously utopian fiction. Dystopian fiction takes place in either a terrible world where you would never want to live, or in a world that looks perfect on the surface but is really terrifying underneath. Whereas utopian fiction takes place in a genuinely great place to live, either perfect or as close to perfect as is humanly possible. Star Trek is often cited as an example of utopian fiction. And being the Deep Space Nine fan that I am, I'm not 100% on board with that. I think that there's some stuff about the Federation that's not totally utopian. But that being the case, it is a really good example of a society that's pretty much as good as it could be, at least most of the time. However, there are Star Trek episodes that verge into dystopian territory. And I'm not even just talking about the Deep Space Nine episodes that deal with Section 31 or some of the newer stuff coming out of Discovery and Picard, but like even just the normal Next Generation episodes where they beam down to the planet and they think that everything is, you know, oh, this is such a wonderful, interesting planet and then something goes terribly wrong and they discover something about the society that they're visiting that they didn't really want to know or that they would rather not have to deal with. Aside from that, there are a lot of just plain dystopian societies in other parts of the Star Trek galaxy. For instance, the Borg are definitely straight out of a dystopian novel. The Romulans are pretty dystopian. The Cardassians are so dystopian. The Dominion. So even though the Federation is pretty close to a utopia, not everything out there is. And they have to deal with things that are definitely not utopian. So. Is Star Trek dystopian fiction then? No, I wouldn't say that it is. Basically, the Federation and Starfleet and everything is good, and the threats against them are external, not from corruption on the inside. When there is something like, you know, a corrupt admiral that Picard has to expose or whatever, that's the exception to the rule, not just the normal way of things. However, I think it's really interesting that even within a utopian setting, there can be little hints of dystopia. Dystopian fiction is science fiction by its very nature, just in that it takes place in the future and it speculates on things. Sometimes it's a little bit more social science as opposed to hard sciences or like space opera type stuff, but definitely there is an aspect of science fiction, even to something like 1984, for instance, where the technology is not even close to what we have in the modern day. Society hasn't advanced that much from the time that it was written. There aren't intelligent robots or faster than light space travel or anything like that. But still, the use of technology for surveillance purposes and the questions about things relating to society, basically things that fall under the category of sociology or political science or other social science fields. However, if dystopian is pretty much all science fiction in some way, does that mean that science fiction is all dystopian? Of course not. We already had the Star Trek example, and I talked in another video about Star Wars and how that's not necessarily dystopian either, despite the Empire being a really bad place to live. It's totally possible for science fiction stories to explore science and technology without going the dystopian route. And in fact, I would say that the more far future a science fiction story is, the less likely it is to be dystopian as its primary genre. So what I mean by that is that dystopias are usually near future stories that take place in a world not that different from our own, but different in a few surprising and disturbing ways. But there are also stories that are both dystopian and far future science fiction. One example that comes to mind is Across the Universe by Beth Revis. This is a young adult trilogy, and it takes place on a generation ship bound for another planet. The main character is actually from the present day because she has been frozen in cryogenic sleep for a long time, but the other main character is born on the spaceship, has no memory of Earth, and the entire world in which it takes place is very disconnected from Earth. On the other hand, though, it is totally dystopian. It's not primarily about the sci-fi adventure, it's primarily about this messed up society 
that happens to be on a spaceship traveling to another planet. Dystopian novels are also not necessarily apocalyptic or post-apocalyptic. They definitely can be, and a lot of dystopian societies are the result of a cataclysmic, apocalyptic type event, a nuclear war, climate change, things like that. However, there are also more mundane origin stories for dystopian societies, and there are post-apocalyptic worlds or apocalyptic worlds that are not necessarily dystopian. In another video I posted earlier this month, I said that I don't necessarily consider zombie apocalypse stories to be dystopian. They definitely can be, but just the fact that there's a zombie apocalypse I don't think makes them dystopian. It's all about how it's handled and what aspects of that situation are chosen to be explored. And that's just one example. I also don't necessarily consider the Life As We Knew It series by Susan Beth Puffer, I hope I'm saying that right, to be a dystopian series. It definitely is not taking place in a world that you would want to live in. But the main problem is that the moon has been knocked out of orbit and people are struggling to survive. It's not about government oppression, it's not about censorship, it's not about surveillance, it's not about human rights violations. It's about a natural disaster and the ways in which society crumbles to pieces in the wake of that disaster. So that's very much a borderline example of it could be considered dystopian, but it's not necessarily. I consider it more to be apocalyptic fiction as opposed to dystopian fiction, but that might just be me. One more clear dividing line as far as what dystopian fiction is not is that it's usually not historical or contemporary realistic fiction. So for instance, a novel set in Europe during World War II, in North Korea, or in other really dark times and places in human history, those would not be considered dystopian. Those are considered to be historical fiction. Dystopian fiction is fictional. It's not based in real history. Certainly, dystopian societies can be inspired by real history, for example, Margaret Atwood said that when she wrote The Handmaid's Tale, she didn't put anything in that book that hadn't been done to women somewhere in the world at some point in history. But the society portrayed in that book isn't a real one. On the other hand, something like Les Miserables, for instance, takes place in a very unpleasant setting that you probably wouldn't want to live in, and it addresses a lot of the same questions that dystopian books do. But actually that takes place in a real time in history, in a real place. And so it's not a dystopian book. One question that I came up with while I was preparing to do this video that I had never really thought about before is, can there be such a thing as a fantasy dystopia? Dystopian is usually seen as a subgenre of science fiction, but could it also be a subgenre of fantasy? There definitely are fantasy books that have characteristics of a dystopia. Like for instance, Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo, that totally seems like a dystopian setting. Or even Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. When Voldemort takes over and is running the Ministry of Magic and Harry and his friends have to go on the run, you see the world sort of warped into something that it really shouldn't be and the characters have to put it right. The caveat that I would have in characterizing something like Six of Crows or Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows as dystopian fiction is that the societies that they are exploring are very disconnected from our reality. So whereas they might still ask questions about, for instance, the abuse of power or inequality or things like that, there's also a huge fantasy element that dystopian fiction doesn't usually have. And then finally, there's one last category that I wanted to look at. I don't really have a name for it, and I only have one example of it. There's this book that I read a long time ago titled Dark Life by Cat Falls. It takes place in a post-global warming world. Most of the land is covered by water. Cities are very tightly packed. People live in one-room apartments with their whole family, or in boats on the surface of the ocean, or in experimental colonies on the seafloor. And the main characters live in this world and have adventures in this world and see things go terribly wrong in this world. But the story doesn't really feel dystopian. It feels like a world with a lot more hope than a typical dystopian novel. It's not just a dystopian setting as the backdrop for an adventure story, like what I said about Star Wars, for instance, and it's not a false utopia where everything looks right. It's more of the opposite of that. It's a dystopia at first glance. Everything looks wrong, but then you see the main characters make the best of it, and 
their lives seem to be worth living and their society seems to be a fairly good one despite the unpleasant circumstances and despite the fact that the world on the surface is definitely dystopian. So I don't know if I would characterize something like that as dystopian, but I don't know what I would call it instead. It seems like a glass half full optimistic version of dystopian. And I'd be really interested to know if there are any other books out there like that because I really enjoyed it. So if you know of any, feel free to leave a comment down below. I would love to hear.